Coming up on Business Live, Economist projects new cocoa producer price could boost production in the next crop season. Also, Association of Bankers rules out massive job losses as some banks resort to working from home amidst COVID-19 pandemic. Plus, Minister of Trade and Industry inspects 6.6 .6 million cities rice processing factory in Western North. I'm Israel I, and the details in a moment. of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Al Hassan and Dani, has ruled out massive job losses at some bank resort to working from home due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is coming after the recent PricewaterhouseCoopers banking sector survey revealed that more banks plan to continue the work from home model even when the pandemic is over. But speaking on PMS, PM Express Business Edition, Mr. Andani said the work from home model will give banks an opportunity to redeploy staff. We want, we don't really want you to walk into Stanley, but we want you to enjoy all the financial services you want and more in the comfort of your, your office. We want to make everybody productive. Look, to just sit in a car and or walk or do anything, it, it must, you must be looking at your productivity levels. So what we're trying to do in banking right now is to cut your journey times, cut your waiting times. And I'm happy now we are not talking about people saying that they are spending three hours in the queue in the bank or There's something. no excuse for That's being not, late for the meeting. No. So we are always saying is that most of the things that you would have ordinarily driven to the bank through traffic or walk to the bank or stay in the queue for, we want you to be able to access that even before you leave home. In fact, we want to make that connection even deeper and more. We want the market woman selling at Savilibu Market with a, a, a phone with a QR code can actually sell you yams in Savilibu Market and be confident that his mo her money is sitting with Stambic Bank without leaving her shop. So she has a QR code on her phone. You have a QR code, you bought yam, it's 20 CDs. You connect, pam, pim, and her money is sitting in the bank. She gets an SMS message. What could you be? In fact, it's no longer her now taking your 20 cities to, or you go to a Sablugu, uh, Stambik in Sablugu to take 20 cities to come and pay her, and she goes back to Stambik. No. She, we have, we've worked with partners on her smartphone. She has a QR code, which has which has become, almost become a point of sale mm. device. So yours, and then, you know, it's connected. Your account will be debited in, say, EcoBank. Her account will be credited in Stampic Bank. There at the Savilibu market. What more confidence do you need? Negative of Bayport savings and loans near Mankra Tete is making a strong case for businesses and entrepreneurs to consider raising funds from the Ghana Stock Exchange through bonds to support the operations for growth. According to him, compared to borrowing, the BERS offers cheaper funding options. We we're speaking to Joy Business after the company presented its financial report to shareholders, which indicated an impressive half-year result despite the coronavirus pandemic. There's so much opportunity. I think um, increasingly um, Ghanaians need to look more at that part. If we are looking to build the economy that we want and want to be proud of, um, we, we need to begin to start to look at that alternative stock exchange and say, are there companies there who we can also invest in and get, and, and the, the returns on that market is also fantastic. So um, we, we've had a great um, partnership with the Ghana Stock Exchange um, and, and, and a great run with them um, with our medium term, term notes um, over the last five years or so. Um, and I encourage other um, companies who are looking to raise capital, looking to raise equity, to definitely have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we are actually in the market right now. Um, we've, we are issuing um, um, a bond um, and we are, we are looking to raise some capital. So it's, it's one of our sources of income. It's not something we're going to get off the market now. Um, and we constantly would be raising it as and when we need to um, and applying it to our business. Mm -hmm. Is that a cheaper source? Um, yes. The, the, it, 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 well, there are different terms in the market. But for now, it's one of the reasonable sources compared to the other sources we've got available, yes. 
The company recorded a 3% growth in total assets to 809 million cities compared to 788 million cities in 2019. Now moving on, economist Professor Peter Quarte is projecting a significant increase in cocoa production with the announcement of an increase in the producer price. President Kufuado announced a 28% increase which will see the farmer taking approximately 660 cities for a bag of cocoa. Professor Corte tells your business the move will also impact positively on the city. He spoke on the marketplace. Yes, the increment, which is about 28.4%, is a laudable idea in the sense that it will motivate farmers to produce more of their crop. It will motivate them to invest uh, part of the proceeds in their farms. It will encourage them to not to cut down cocoa trees, but also rather groom their trees so that we could get better yield or output. And then it also discouraged them from smuggling. So when you put all of this together, you will realize that output is very likely likely to increase. Granted that nothing uh, untoward happens, then we are likely to see higher yields in, in cocoa, and that will translate into higher income. So if you compute our production or GDP, you will find that cocoa will grow uh, the share of cocoa, the output of cocoa will grow. Similarly, um, it will yield exchange uh, returns, uh, foreign currency returns, which can impact on our foreign currency or our exchange rate. Um, I anticipate that prices would uh, inch up a little bit as we move along. Um, so that, that can impact on the uh, volume or the revenue. Also, when output increases, it depends on the extent to which output increases. If output is able to increase more than the decline in prices, we're still likely to see an increase in, in revenue. So um, I am optimistic that we, uh, we will see um, higher returns from cocoa than, than before. The past couple of months uh, has not been very good because of COVID-19 uh, effects. But I think we're gradually seeing our economies getting back on track. So. Uh, we can't but be cautiously optimistic. Well, on the wings of your optimism, we do know this is an election year, and with this come its own challenges regarding spending and expenditure in that, in, in that same light. Are you confident once again that this could be maintained beyond the crop season, considering the election year? Well, from, from what I hear from the uh, experts, this increment was also coming from some $400 uh, per ton that was negotiated with the buyers. That's a living, that a living differential. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, living, yeah, yeah, living differential. It's not just the price increase or uh, you know change, but it's also the living cost of living differential. So certainly that that will not stop once it's been agreed upon. So I believe that component will still be there to maintain uh, future or guarantee future prices of cocoa. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Alan Chairman Ting, has embarked on phase two of a store of various project sites under the One District, One Factory initiative. The latest visit was to a rice processing factory at Bokasu Sefi, a Contombra district in the Western North region. Charles Ayete has more in this report. The rice processing factory at Bokasu Sushi Akontumbra district in the western north region falls under the second model of the 1D1 a program which identifies groups of farmers who lack the capacity to establish processing facilities for their produce. Trade Minister Alan Tremantin explained the injection of the seed capital will boost productivity. So what government is doing is empowering farmers who otherwise would have absolutely no opportunity to be able to raise funding from a bank to establish a processing facility. So government provides the, 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 uh, the capital, the seed capital, for them to install such a processing. And because it is owned by the farmers, it means that they get maximum value from not just supplying, uh, in this case, paddy rice to their own processing mill, but when it is milled, which is where the value really is, they also then get the full uh, value in terms of dividends uh, back to them. So, in, 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 so you find that even in districts where, unfortunately, there may not be an interest from a business promoter, government uh, is supporting the farmers to become 
uh, promoters and investors themselves. The factory is 65% complete and expected to be finalized by the end of the year. Its production capacity is expected to be at one and a half tons of rice per hour. Kusiata Injury is the national director for the Rural Enterprise Program. We have gone through uh, several phases until uh, now. Uh, we had targeted about 100,000 or so jobs, but we do several activities and interventions. Uh, this one we are describing is only one of them. So already uh, we have exceeded our target, but we are still moving forward with these new ideas from the current uh, government that is bringing up such infrastructure that was originally not part of our program uh, design. The 1D1F Common User Processing Facility is an agro-processing facility made up of building equipped with machines to process raw materials or convert agro-industrial materials into products. The costs are being established by the Rural Enterprises Program of the Ministry of Trade and Industry in line with the Government of Ghana's flagship One District One Factory Policy. They are being established with funding from the African Development Bank under the Agricultural Commodity Processing Infrastructure Development of the Rural Enterprise Program. Most rural farmers have not been able to access government's COVID-19 stimulus package. That is according to the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. Earlier this year, President Sukufuado announced a 1 billion CD stimulus package to households and businesses, particularly small and medium-scale enterprises under the Coronavirus Alleviation Program. We're speaking with Joy News on the sidelines of the Ghana Federation of Forest and Farm Producers National Dialogue Series. Head of Programs for the Peasant Farmers Association, Charles Nyaba, says most of these farmers can't secure the paperwork required to claim the package. That's one of the major challenges that we are facing. And we think that with this platform, it will make it easier for anybody to want to actually reach to the grassroots, to the farmers, to be able to connect to that. You know, if you look at the stimulate package, it's good because the COVID-19 has actually affected the majority of farmers. By the end of the day, they are not getting. The mere fact that you need to have your businesses registered, you need to have a TIN number, you need to have proper records before you are benefited from that facility, has already cut the farmers out because they don't meet those criteria. So the support rather goes to traders, and some of these traders usually do not target the farmers. They rather go to places like Burkina Faso, so Togo, and brought products. For instance, Ghana depends heavily on Burkina Faso for tomatoes. So if you give COVID-19 stimulus package to traders, they go there to buy from Burkina people. Whilst our Ghanaian farmers have their produce rotted. So what it means is that we are rather giving the package to other country citizens, not Ghanaians. But we are thinking that with GAFAP, subsequently, government should identify these groups who deal or represent majority of grassroots farmers. So if the support were to be channeled to GAFAP, GAFAP would have been able to submit that to a grassroots. So at the end of the day, Ghanaians would be those who would have benefited from that package. Meanwhile, Senior Agriculture Officer at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, King Celia Jemang, says his outfit has provided all the necessary information about the stimulus package to inspection officers to pass it on to farmers in every district. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture okay, is working with the local government ministry. You know, because of the decentralized uh, uh, program that is being undertaken, by Ghana, the Department for Agriculture are part of the district assemblies. Okay, so as part of our collaboration, we provide information to our extension officers who are with these district assemblies, especially in the Department of Agriculture. So we have. Uh, E-agriculture as one of the initiatives of the ministry. So by that, we are able to disseminate information to extension officers who are located in the respective districts and municipalities who are in direct contact with the farmers. So the farmers are able to assert whatever information 
that the ministry is providing through the extension agents or agriculture extension agents. So the farmers are not let out. There is conscious effort to ensure that farmers are provided with the needed information. So the ministry, through its uh, e-agriculture system and the extension system that is in place, is able to get in touch with the farmers. So during this era, this is one of the avenues that we're able to get in touch to provide farmers the needed information to be able to assess those packages that was uh, package that were uh, given out. The women's wing of the Ghana Institution of Surveyors is advocating for more women to join the engineering and built environment profession. President of the group Christiana Bobobi wants girl child stereotypes about such professions demolished and girls empowered for higher education. She said this when the institution celebrated the vice president of KNUSD for being the first woman to hold a position in the school. Prince Apia has won this report. Despite encouragement by many professionals for women to break the bounds and venture into areas described as only for men, there are still limitations in certain spheres of the economy. One of such is engineering, science and technology, which many women shy away from pursuing. It is for this reason that the Ghana Institution of Surveyors are celebrating the new Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Akosia Dixon, is part of the group. Female branch of the Ghana Institution of Surveyors. Write your name in solid sterling silver. President of the group, Christiana Bobobi, who doubles as the administrator of the school lands, wants girl child stereotypes about such professions removed and girls empowered for higher education. We used to have almost no female in the land surveying, but now we can count quite a number of them. And the vice chancellor herself being an alumna of the institution and also the first female, we are so proudly associating with her for what she has achieved. The girl child should be encouraged and educated to the highest ability that she can reach. Parents are encouraged to encourage their children, their female children also, uh, take up challenges. The stereotypes must be reduced and limited, so every child is given an opportunity and to take the full potential of their abilities. She spoke to Law Business when the group presented a plug to celebrate the new Vice Chancellor of KNUST. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Akusia Dixon, who is a member of the group, says more women must be encouraged into management positions. Um, we are the managers um, of the homes. So right from um, infancy, we are taught how to do these things. So we don't even have to go to business school before we start the lessons of managing any facility. We are taught right from the beginning. And that is a plus for us. We have every cause to continue to um, give of our best in moving the wheels of this country forward in whichever profession that we find ourselves in. And I believe in us and I believe in our capabilities. Unless we say we won't do it. But All of us standing here. Prince Apia reporting. Let's keep now, more corporate organizations are responding to calls by Joy FM for relief items for flood victims in some parts of the northern and upper east regions. The flood has so far claimed lives and destroyed many properties in the area. A situation that has moved the multimedia group through its Super Morning Show to declare an up to us campaign to support the said victims. Promacidor Ghana, producers of Carbell, an enterprise group, were the latest to lend support to the initiative. Head of events at Promacidor Gideon Kodo spoke with Joy Business. As a business, uh, we find uh, Promacida as a business uh, grew on the back of the Ghanaian community. And uh, for all our brands, we consider them communal brands. 
And so where we see the need to support uh, the vulnerable in the society, we try as much as possible to jump on. Uh, mind you, together with uh, multimedia, we had the Carbo Boho project, which we just completed. And we have even more to come up. But we are, we're told of the campaign that Joy FM was leading to support the victims of the Bagri Dam flooding situation. And uh, yeah, I mean, we saw the need to come support because it was a, a laudable initiative from uh, Joy FM. And that is why we are here today to present uh, products. That's the Yamvita product. We have Mixi product. We have Kalba product to support the victims of the, the, the Bagri Dam flood. Well, we are co-host of the Super Morning Show with Sting Amwa, who received the donations on behalf of the company, appealed to more agencies to get on board and support. To Promacidor for, you know, listening to our plea and coming to our aid. Um, for us, it's very important because as you can see, these are, uh, you know, beverages, foods that would help our people in northern Ghana who have been displaced as a result of uh, the Bagri Dam spillage and days of heavy rainfall. As we commend them and show appreciation, it's also important that uh, other corporate institutions and bodies uh, that are watching us now would come to the aid of our brothers and sisters up there in the north. We've always insisted that as a people, we believe in one thing, we believe in communalism. And we say that um, once our brothers are down, we're all down. If we put a smile on their faces, we're putting a smile on our face also. So it is very important that we come to their aid. Now, in spite of the numerous economic challenges that COVID-19 has brought to bear on nations and individuals like resulting in some losing their jobs and others having to start all over again, for two young people, it has served as an avenue to live up to the dream of becoming entrepreneurs. 23-year-old Wisdom Nano and 20-year-old Sabina Sante have been sharing the inspiration behind their startup businesses. Join us is Annabella Ohene Jang has more in the following report. The Minister of Health has confirmed two cases of COVID-19. In the darkness and the sense of gloom that's enveloped the world through the coronavirus pandemic, two young Ghanaians have found some light, creating for themselves livelihoods. <laughs> 23-year-old Wisdom Nano, 2020 graduate of the University of Ghana, started a delivery service business in 2019 as a way of solving a problem on campus. But the spread of the virus and the lockdown made him more creative about the opportunities and realities around his delivery service. Well, I started we go um, with my partner called uh, Wilfred so many back, back on campus I realized a lot of students were facing challenges on how to get um, items and then most, uh, mostly food from within campus to their hostels and outside campus. So through my personal observations, I realized that um, there was not a proper I mean, delivery system within the campus community that connects students to most of these vendors on campus and outside. So I engaged a few friends about it and then uh, finally met my current uh, co-founder and we had uh, a lot of talks around it and we felt it was a good venture to um, explore. Then there's Sabina Santi, a 20-year-old student of the Ghana Institute of Journalism. She used the boredom from the lockdown to tap into the inner resources of her skills. This skill has become a small business. Now, through the power of social media, Sabina sells to clients all over the country every day. When the president gave the announcement that we should stay in the house because of the coronavirus, I, I was just in the house, like watching TV, eating and becoming fat. <laughs> so um, I just felt like I should do something. And I kept asking myself what I should do. And then the idea just came because before I used to sell hair bundles, just the hair bundles to people. And I was like, if you can sell hair bundles to people, why don't you make the wake caps yourself so you can earn extra money for that? And um, I felt it was a good idea. So I just made some calls to some hairstylists I know, and they agreed to teach me. There's been job losses and many people in the world despondent. These two, however, are different. COVID, COVID in, in its sense, I think, uh, 
I mean, collapse a lot of businesses. So we can't, I mean, make merry around that, right? So, I mean, things happen and then humanity have to rise up to make changes, right? Rise up to the occasion and uh, create other opportunities for themselves. So we are quite fortunate that our business was in line with COVID-19. So that's a good gain for us. The whole COVID thing, we all know it's not a good thing. It's not a good disease or sickness, but because of COVID, we got to stay at home and I got to learn a trade, something that nobody can take from me. I make a lot of money from it because I, I charge 50 cities for making a closure wake up and 100 cities for making a frontal wake up. So if I'm to get like about 10 customers, even within the week, that's a lot of money. So they say when life throws lemons at you, you make lemonade out of them. Indeed, these two youngsters have used these hard times to the advantage when many couldn't. Annabella Hennigan's report for Joy News. And that'll be all for Business Live. I'm Israel Thank you very much for watching. You have a good night.